Hey everybody and welcome to my second of two videos on this, the Hasselblad 501CM. A camera so fancy that it needs its own special bayonet lock lens cap. Don't lose it, there's no filter threads on this. So here it is. Uh, let's go through this camera and talk about what everything is and how it works. This is the way to properly load film into the Hasselblad 501CM. Okay. So first, before we start loading it, let's get familiar a little bit with what's on the Hasselblad film back. This is the film release lock right here that lifts up and you turn to unlock and remove the, the film carriage. This is the dark slide right here that covers the film plane so you can swap out backs. This is the uh, release from the camera body. Here is the film advance lever that we are going to use in just a minute or two. This is the frame count window and the shutter cocked indicator. And on the back here we have a um, film memo holder and the film back holder as well. Okay, so now that we know what all the terminology is on the Hasselblad film back, let's see how we're going to load film. The first thing to do is take the dark slide we, um, pull tab and fold it forward. Now we're going to lift out this unlocking pin and rotate it like that. And when we rotate it all the way, the film back is going to pop open. There we go. Got caught a little bit on the film back. So a lot of people, including myself, like to store the film back out of the way when we're doing this so that it's a little bit safer and doesn't get damaged. Now here is the film caddy or cartridge. Lots of People call it different things. This is the expired film spool. We're going to take it out of here and put it into the take up area. The take up area of the film caddy has this knob. We're going to need that in just a minute. I've got a new roll of film here. I'm going to open it up. Now it's going to seem like I put this on backwards, but it'll make sense in just a minute why I do this. It feels like it should pull the other way but we want to have the black side of the film paper facing into, uh, facing the same direction as this. So the printed side is going to touch the film back. As you're loading this, you want to try to get the film paper into this clip. Or just, there we go, is that going to go? It's going to try and we get the film paper into the clip. Yes, there we go. Now pull it through a little further. Come on. And we're going to advance the film here to tighten it up on the spool. We're gonna advance now until there's a little orange arrow right here. That aligns with the arrow indicators printed on the film. And because this popped out of the clip, we're going to massage this in a little bit right here. There we go. That should do it. Having it in the clip like this, this is far from a perfect loading, in, by the way, allows us to slide it into the film back without it catching on the film back as it's loaded. Now at this point in real life, you take your dark slide, you put it back into the camera, but I'm going to show you what happens as you advance the film. Using the knob on this side, we're going to advance it until we get to frame one. And the advantage and the genius of this system is that it allows an assistant to load up the film all the way to frame one. And here you can see the film coming in. So that the photographer can take a ready to shoot at frame one film back and put it on their camera at the same time that they hand the assistant a, a film back that's only been advanced to frame 12 because the assistant can finish advancing it on the film back. Now you'll see that this doesn't line up perfectly. It's not going to crank forward any further once you've advanced it to the frame. So you just rotate it backwards and let it sit into its rest there so that it's out of the way and won't get damaged. Now you can see we're at frame one and the camera is, or the film is ready to have photos taken with it. Uh, and of course you would have had dark slide in the whole time. You can see now that the uh, indicator here is all silver instead of all orange. And as the film is used, that will become progressively more orange. And uh, 
the film assistant is ready to hand this to the photographer and take the next back and repeat the process over and over. It takes a few minutes, it's a bit fiddly, but um, overall the system is a pretty good one to use and it's important to know how to use it well and properly. So now that we've seen that, let's talk about how to mount and unmount the lens. The lens on this camera can only be removed once it's armed and ready to take a photo. To unmount it, we're gonna find this button down here. This is the lens release, and we're gonna rotate counter or anti-clockwise to remove the lens. Now we can put on a different lens if we like, if, if you uh, have multiple lenses for this camera. To mount the lens, you're gonna look for the red index marker in here and the red index mark on the lens, which is a little triangle, and line them up. And also on this lens, there's a little red index on the top of the bayonet flange right here so that it's very easy to line up. We're just going to lock it in place, turn it until it clicks, and now the lens is mounted and we are ready to take photos with it. For using a flash with this camera, it does not have a hot shoe. This camera has an accessory shoe because it has this prism on it, but if you don't have the prism, it's not gonna have an accessory shoe, but the lenses will have a flash PC port here. So you'll push this button down, plug in the flash cable, release the button so that the cable's locked in place, and now you're ready to go. And you can take a flash photo on any shutter speed because this uses a leaf shutter. So here is the viewfinder on the Hasselblad 501CM. It's a little bit hard to see what's in front of the lens. You can probably see my hand there a little bit. Uh, I took the prism off so we could actually see the matte screen. Um, so I'm gonna use my, my studio light here and you can see that uh, there is no light drop off on this screen anywhere. Uh, there's a little bit of vignetting down here, but I think that's mostly because of the build of my studio light, not anything to do with the focusing screen. But uh, realistically, in terms of medium format focusing screens, that's basically no light loss. So really well-built, well-engineered screen. So this is the stock screen that came with the Hasselblad 501CM. And uh, the acute matte screens have a little notch up here near the top, two notches up here, uh, and then also the uh, focusing screen, the, just having the, the crosshairs mark on it uh, indicates that this is the stock screen. So if you are buying a new screen for your Hasselblad uh, and you can get one with these two notches in it, that's what you wanna shoot for because those are the best screens. To change the focusing screen is pretty easy. We're just going to slide that notch, that lock over there and that lock over there. Okay, now we're just gonna tilt this. The screen falls right out. And if there's another screen, a grid screen or a different type of screen that the user would like to put in, or if they just wanna clean some of the persistent dust off of it, they can do that. We're gonna put it right back in with the notches up near the top. And then grab these two locks and put them push them back into place. Really strongly recommend not using your keys for this. I am sweating bullets right now, but my fingernails aren't quite long enough. There we go. And those locks, in, now that they're in place, will hold the focusing screen in place at the proper position. And that's how you do that. To remove and replace the prisms, it's a, it's a really easy procedure. All you need to do is take off the film back so here we are with the camera with the film back removed and this is how we're going to change the prism to access or remove the prism to either change it to a viewfinder to a hood or access the focusing screen just remove the film back and slide the prism or screen off and you're good to go you can clean it if you need to or whatever you're going to do and then when you're done just slide it right back on until it clicks and you've changed your prism or focusing hood. So now that we've seen how to do basically ev everything with this camera, let's run through the process of taking a photo with it. Okay, so if, you're shut, if your camera is armed like this one is, the first thing you'll need to do before you take a photo, before anything in the camera is going to work, is remove the dark slide. So we can remove it from over here, 
put it into the dark slide retainer right there. Fold that over, now it's all out of the way. And we'll want to set our shutter speed and aperture to the proper settings based on either our instinct or our light meter reading. Look through the, either through the prism, fo prism back, uh, prism viewfinder, or through the, fo on the uh, focusing screen on the waist level finder and focus to, oh, okay, that looks, oh, that looks pretty good. That's where we want to focus. The shutter button is down here. So all you have to do is take a picture and after you've taken the picture, advance the shutter. <clears throat> As you might have guessed, there's some pretty complex engineering in here, so let's talk about what's going on when we take a picture. When this button is pushed, now the first thing you're gonna notice when I do this is that I'm gonna push it, you're gonna hear the sound of a shutter action, I'm gonna release it, and you're gonna hear another sound. The sound that it made when I released it was the, the mirror coming back down because this camera does not have an instant return mirror. The mirror will not release until this button's released. So when this button is, so one other thing to see in this camera before we get too far along, and the camera's not gonna let me take the film back off without putting the dark slide in. One other thing we've gotta see in the back of the camera here are these barn doors. And these barn doors are a secondary dark shield to the, um, to the film. And what these mean is that if you don't have the dark slide in, you're not going to get a light leak coming in here. This is not the shutter. The shutter is built into the lens. These simply open when a photo is taken, as you can see right there. So this is a pretty complex process. So when I push the shutter button, the first thing that's gonna happen is that the leaves in the leaf shutter are going to close. It's gonna to be too fast for you to see, but I'll show you anyway. Okay? So now after the leaves close, the barn doors here open, one goes down, one goes up, then the mirror pops up so that the mirror is now parallel up here, rested up against the focusing screen. At that point, the shutter opens. So I have it in bulb mode right now, so it's still just hanging out open. But if I had it at 1 500th of a second, the full shuttle shutter cycle would, would happen right then. Same thing at one second, the full shutter cycle would, would happen right then. After the shutter cycle closes, then the leaf shutter closes, in the, in the, the leaves of the shutter close. There we go. Not until I release the shutter button does the mirror pop down and the uh, barn door pop back in place. Now let's see what that would look like if I didn't have the shutter, leaf shutter set to bulb. So you can see that the shutter has closed. Again, the leaf shutter is, has closed back up to prevent light from getting past it. So when the shutter action ends, the leaf shutter, when the, when the shutter button is pushed, the leaf shutter closes. All of this stuff in the camera happens. It opens for the set time, closes again, and then nothing else inside the ca camera happens until I release the shutter button and at that point, the barn door and the mirror go back in place and the shutter, the, the leaves on the shutter remain closed. There we go, you can see it. Until I advance the camera film and rearm the shutter, which at that point reopens the leaves along with the arming of the uh, shutter mechanism. That is complex. There's a whole lot going on there <laughs> all at once. And it's, it's a very precise procedure. Those things have to happen at a set se in a set sequence, at a set, set timing, every single time in order for the camera to work properly and the images to turn out. It is a, a really impressive bit of engineering to say the least. And so, uh, that is it, that is the, the Hasselblad 501CM. Everything else you can do with this is up to your imagination. It's interface, the mechanics are incredibly complex, but the interface is fairly simple. And that means that the only limitation when using this camera is your own imagination. And however far you can take this camera, it can go that far and a whole lot further. So if you have any questions about this uh, camera, 
please leave them below. If, you, if this video was helpful, please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know that the content I'm producing is helpful and useful to you. If you have suggestions or uh, requests, please leave those below. And if I have the equipment and technical know-how, I'm happy to make those. If you are an, are an amateur photographer with photos you've taken with the 501CM, feel free to share a link to your um, albums. And one last thing, thank you guys for watching and take great photos.